Hi everyone, I am very excited because I figured out a really cool material technique that I want to share with you. It might not be accessible to everyone, but I just want to share it because I think it's just a really cool thing. But it does have a bit of a backstory, so I need to run you through that first. So obviously, if you've been around for a while, you know I'm a fan of doing things the procedural way, so less effort and kind of having more parametric control over the way things look. So whether that's for generative modeling or procedural materials, I just like doing things in a very automated way. So putting that to the side, I like artwork that's kind of semi-realistic, maybe more on the side of stylized, a bit surreal, very vibrant and visually stimulating. So that's typically why I like vibrant colors and emissive material lighting and things like that. Now with those two things in mind, the procedural techniques and the vibrant artwork, so I've been trying to find a way to bring those two things together. And I've kind of been doing that over time. If you look carefully, you can see clues. In the modular metals package, there's a couple of presets that are more for very stylized artwork. I think the Mega Shader Regal preset is probably the best example of that, but it just always feels like there's something missing. There's just something about the workflow that isn't creative enough or it doesn't provide enough freedom. So what's the bottom line of this video? Well, basically, I found a way that you can take a very simple snapshot of a material, a surface, a texture, whatever you like, and make a complex material out of it. And you can do this by blending it with a pre-existing texture on an object, having it kind of look like it's the base material with the other texture coming out of it, or swap that around so it's kind of the wear and tear material. This will be better to explain if I just show you. But before we jump into the blend file for that, I need to say that one of the reasons I've kind of experimented with this and come up with these results is because I've been playing around with these scatter shot add-on by Jonathan Lampel, who works with CG Cookie. Jonathan is a fantastic person. They've done all kinds of course content. They make YouTube videos, they make add-ons, they make all sorts of stuff. So go and follow them on Twitter and like the YouTube and wherever you can. But Scattershot is a tool they've made to help with doing some kind of Voronoi distributions of materials to prevent tiling. So if you have one or more textures and you don't want them to tile too obviously, you can use this tool and it'll basically kind of rearrange them and make it look like they're not very repetitive. There are other alternatives available. I'm pretty sure that Polygon has a version of their own tool for this, but Scattershot has a nice variety of features and you can take a look at those by taking a look on the Blender Market page. So there's a variety of nodes and operations you can use to achieve these effects. So jumping into this blend file here, you can see my first demonstration. I'll give you a quick explanation of what's going on here because it looks a bit messy. On the right, I have a 3D model scan by KT Wolf. This appeared in the Epoch animated short that I made. So you may or may not have seen it in that. Down here, I've got two textures. One of them is the original diffuse for the 3D scan. And one of them is just a random screen grab I've taken from an unsplashed image. So you can see it's a paint splatter image and it's clearly not seamless. If you laid this out in a row, you're obviously going to see the tiles in between the image. And then at the top here, we have my node setup. Now we have the scatter shot scatter Voronoi coordinate system going here with the nodes. And this is basically what we can use to take an image that we provide it with and rearrange it and scatter it so it doesn't look so tiled. I can possibly give you a quick demonstration of this if I bring out this kind of plain object here. Now, because we've got the original 3D scan diffuse on this as well, I'm going to need to unplug this just to make it a bit more obvious. So let me bypass this and plug the color in. So we can see here that there's a bit more of a kind of random pattern, obviously, because it's so not seamless, you're going to get some harsh lines somewhere. But just to demonstrate what this node will do, I'm going to move on over to EV so we can get a bit more of a real time change. Wait for the shaders to compile. All right, so now if I change the edge blur value, you can see what it's kind of doing here. It's trying to break up the repetition of tiles. We can change the location as they move around these kind of splatted areas, also rotations and scales and everything like that. Side note on this bit, if you want to use the scatter Voronoi coordinates properly and you don't want to make like an abstract mess like I am, then you're probably best keeping the scale on something like one so the edge distortion can do its thing properly. But again, I'm just always committed to breaking things and doing things the wrong way for the sake of making cool looking stuff. So if you do want to use scattershot the appropriate way, I need to tell you that Jonathan Lampel has a fantastic fantastic one hour 13 minute video breaking down all of the principles behind procedural scattering. It's so incredibly comprehensive and I highly recommend it for anyone that is actually genuinely interested in very functional techniques for removing the tiling artifacts that comes from using textures a lot of the time. So I will leave a link to that video below. It's going to be a lot more sensible than me fanboying over pretty patterns and colors for like 10 minutes. So anyway, carrying on. So I'm going to explain the rest of the nodes here for you. What I really wanted was a way to take a basic screenshot and combine it with a pre-existing texture. So that's why we have two here. We have the original diffuse for the 3D scan and then we have paint, which is represented here. I'm just going to jump back over to cycles quickly because it will be much easier to demonstrate this. So these two images are being mixed together in a mix RGB node. And the way they're being mixed is dependent on the shape of the object. So obviously cavities, edges, ambient occlusion, that kind of thing. So I have my node here called get edges plus AO. This is not a default node in Blender. It actually comes from my node tools package, which I believe is free on Gumroad if you want to check that out. So what this is doing is getting a mask which is basically a combination of ambient occlusion shadowing data plus edge detection. So that mask is being passed into the factor input of this mix node. So it says where the original texture and this new paint texture should be combined. 
Now the paint texture looks very good when combined with the 3D scan texture because of this scattering. So it's not going to have these harsh lines going all over the place. And then once these are combined, I can pass it through like a hue saturation node. So if this was stylized, we can get some extra control going. And then just to add to the top of that, I passed a color through my ambient grunge node, which is a paid product. And then that will finally go to the color. So what the ambient grunge does is, and I've mentioned it so many times on this channel, it basically just again looks at the AO areas and then adds some muck textures procedurally generated. Roughness is provided from the complex iron from modular metals. Again, this is all optional. You can just make your own kind of generated noise textures and get similar results that way. And if possible, a normal map from the original 3D scan. But this is the main part here that's important. Taking a simple image, scattering it in a way that makes it non-tiled and then combining it with the original texture dependent on the shape of the geometry. Now if you don't have an original texture for whatever object you're using that's perfectly fine, get rid of it. Just replace it with whatever color you like and look it still looks really cool. So we can zoom in and we can see that on certain parts of the geometry where things are kind of coming up it's trying to mixing that weird paint texture. So in terms of stylization you can get lots of really cool effects. So if I plug this in it looks completely different again. Now at the moment, the way that these nodes are mixed together, the paint is coming above the original texture or color, whatever you choose, but we can swap these around and then it will do the opposite. So now the paint is the base color and the 3D scan texture is the top one. And again, this looks really cool. So if we just swap these things around and unplug certain ones, everything we do is a different cool looking procedural result. And this was literally just a quick screen grab from Unsplash. So let me reset this and we're gonna show you another demonstration. So one image I chose to really test this was an obviously tiling wood material. So we can see the planks here. It's not even completely offset properly. There's a dark section and a light section. So I'm gonna click on my objects here and then change it to the wood material. And if I zoom out, you can see that this still looks pretty cool because I've got the wood coming underneath. It looks like the statue has a bit of a wood base for some reason. And then the metal is kind of coming out from it. This isn't realistic, but again, from a stylization or a surrealist standpoint, it still looks very visually stimulating. Now, again, we can swap these around so we can have the wood coming out from the top. And then again, you can unplug any things that you like. So now we have the wood just coming out on top of an RGB value, or if we plug this back in, Maybe swap it around and then get rid of the texture. Now the wood is just the base and we can have whatever we want on top. So again, just by taking simple screenshots and for reference, these are 1024 by 1024 pixel images, we can get some very cool procedural results and they'll look good from almost any angle. But the way that this mapping works means that from most of the positions that we're looking, even up close, it's going to look very, very cool. I know I keep saying very cool a lot, but it's because I'm very excited about this because the next demonstrations are the best in my opinion. So let me just reset this. So I thought, okay, we've got the technique down. So if I was going to make some artwork with this, what kind of thing would I like? So I found some abstract bluey purpley type pattern again on Unsplash, really cool website. And I thought, okay, well, this is going to be the Curtis Holt visual styling test. So let's swap over to it. And here we go. I think this is just amazing. 1024 by 1024 pixels, not even particularly high resolution, just procedurally scattered around the object, combined it with the procedural metal nodes and the grunge and all of that. And we can just get this nice result immediately. Once again, this pattern is acting as the base. So if I swap this around, now we can have it coming on top. Say I unplug the texture again and I want to replace it with a different kind of RGB value. I can do that as well. So lots of control. Okay, so that's the Kurt stylization test. If I was going to make my own artwork, this is the kind of thing that I would do. But I thought, okay, let's test this even further. What about a pattern, a basic pattern? I jumped into Affinity Designer. I made this very simple cross pattern here. It's just got a gray background and just two red lines going from corner to corner. Surely something like this would break it. It would look terrible because it's obviously going to be really tiled. Well, let's take a look. So here's the result, and I guarantee you I didn't change anything else on the node setup. I just put this texture straight in, and it looks like someone's graffitied a statue. I think part of that is also because of the ambient grunge node already adding the procedural dirt on top of it, but it looks like it's painted, like it's some kind of protest artwork. So when I saw this, I was extremely happy and I thought, okay, well, I've obviously got to use this technique in my artwork from now on. Even where the texture does cut off, because there's all this kind of random variation, it looks like it's intentional. I love in some areas how it also seems to fade inconsistently as well, so it seems like it's almost been spray painted on. So yeah, I just thought this was a really cool technique that I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm going to open up the nodes large here as well so you can take a look at them. Something you should keep in mind as well is the projection mode for the textures because it's going to be quite important as well as the kind of vector inputs that are being provided. So you can see from this texture coordinate I've got the objects being plugged in. For this Voronoi scatter node I've got a noise texture being plugged into the edge warp value. 
that basically provides a bit more inconsistency around the edges of those different tiled zones. So yeah, if you want to try and reconstruct this, you're perfectly free to do that. If you did, I'd be very interested in seeing what kind of visuals you can come up with. And honestly, looking at this, I'm thinking, well, I should probably try and make some artwork out of it now because this would just be put to waste if I didn't. But you know what? Why, why are you taking my word for it? Let's do one more. So I love Unsplash. It's a very cool website. This is not sponsored. Don't worry about that. You basically use any kind of images you want freely, although you're not allowed to directly resell them, so don't get any ideas. But let me just type in pattern and we'll see what we can come up with. This is quite interesting. This is genuinely me just improvising on this point of the video. I haven't seen this before. So I've opened this in a new tab. The image is not particularly high quality, but I don't think that's going to matter for us too much. So I'm going to take a quick grab, just random selection here. I don't actually know if this will appear on OBS, but I hope it will. Now I've jumped into Affinity Designer. I've got 1024 by 1024 canvas here. So I'm going to paste in my quick screen grab. Again, not even particularly anything high quality. Let's just scale this down a bit so I can get as much as I can. And really, I think that'll be okay. So now I'm going to export this into my workspace. Now I'm going to make a new material, abstract PBR5, we're going to call it. And then over here in the pattern, I'm going to open up the material, go to new pattern. And here we go. It's a bit hard to see immediately, but I'm going to open this up over here as well, just so we can see it. We can see that the pattern is now here on the surface, but because this is so high frequency, it almost feels like we should be scaling this down a bit. So maybe let's do that. Okay, put it down to a scale of one. And I still think that looks pretty cool. Looks like some kind of funky psychedelic wallpaper going on, like under the surface here. It really does almost look like some kind of floral cloth pattern. Again, we can change the order that these are presented here. So it just comes along on the surface. A bit harder to see all the lines, but I mean, it does work. So as I said, you can just take any image you like, combine it in any way you want, and just create some complex materials out of simple images. Okay, let's remove the base color. Let's maybe change this to something else. It's a bit too strong. Maybe something gold like that. And here we go. We got something that looks almost like a sci-fi oriental type statue. And honestly, how many seconds did that take to make? So yeah, that's just what I wanted to show you. It's just felt like a bit of an epiphany and a creative realization moment where kind of different threads of my interests and things that I had been trying suddenly come together in something that's now made me really excited. So this is a technique that I'll probably be employing in the future. And I just thought, well, if there's anyone else out there that thinks that this is cool, then hopefully you can give it a try, maybe apply it to your own work. I'm tempted to keep on playing with things now. Maybe if I unplug my iron roughness and do something else, we can make that slightly more metallic. I wonder what happens now if I kind of add some yellow light going around the head again. Again, a bit like the Epoch artwork. So we're freestyling now. I didn't plan to do this, but let's give it a try. Let me make a circle and then I can kind of uh, thicken out the curve on this. Depth, increase that. Scale it down a bit. Let's get my template emissive material. Let me up that to 50 already. Go for a bit of yellow. Scale you down, rotate you a bit. A bit too thick for my liking, I think. I want to get it somewhat close to the surface so we can get some proper lighting effect going. Honestly, I think it's a bit too weak for what we want. Maybe 200 is too strong. Something a bit more darker, orangey yellow. So we go. I like how the surface is reacting to this. But again, because we don't have any procedural stuff going on the roughness, I think it's a bit too basic. So let me plug the iron back in. And I can always increase the reflectivity on this by reducing the age of the iron. So now we have something a bit more inconsistent on the surface. Rendering this out and then adding bloom to the uh, emissive ring would be pretty cool. But as I said, this also works in Eevee, so maybe we can swap over and have a look at how that looks. Okay, still pretty cool, but a bit more inconsistent because obviously the ambient occlusion and edge values are going to be different in Eevee than they are in Cycles. But let me just fix the bloom values there. So there we go, we've got a nice ring going on. So yeah, if you found this interesting, then feel free to give it a try. Check out the scattershot add-on by Jonathan Lampel and his other work. Feel free to join my Discord server where you can take part in art challenges, share your work, get sneak previews of upcoming content. You can even follow me on Twitter or Instagram and consider signing up to my Patreon where you can get your name at the end of my videos because the support coming through Patreon and the Gumroad really, really helps to keep all of these projects moving. So that's all of the videos, all of the other open source projects like EasyBPY, Biogen and all of those. And updates have been made to those as well, so you should hear about those within not the too distant future. So thanks for watching everyone, have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Next time.